Hey team, we're back. We're working on friction problems again. This time we're working on a wedge problem, and wedge problems seem to give students a lot of trouble. What exactly is a wedge problem? Well, it's not just the blocks are in contact with the ground, but blocks are in contact with each other, and of course, they're wedges. They're at an angle there, right? And the problem with this is is that that friction force, right? It's just another force that we have to put on our free body diagrams, but we have to get it on there correctly. If you get friction, you know, in, in the past we said, hey, if you don't know which way a force goes, just assume it, and if you assume wrong, you'll just get a negative. Well, in friction, if you assume wrong, you just get a wrong answer. So you gotta get it correct, okay? And so that's what really uh, stumps students on these. You got to get the direction of friction correct or you get the problem wrong. But hopefully I'm here to clear the air. Now this is what we call a thought problem. Let's look at this guy. Professors love these kind of problems, okay? So I've got a three blocks, A, B, C, and they have weights of 300 newtons, 120, and 600. I've labeled those up there. Find the force that will cause motion in block B, okay? Here's block B. Now, motion in block B, that's the key. And the key is this word right here, okay? Motion. I'm double underlining it. What does that mean, motion? Well, I know what motion means, but what does motion mean in this problem, right? What scenarios of motion do we have where block B moves, okay? So number one, I think I push on it, and I think the whole stack slides up the hill, okay? So let's call that scenario number one, okay? We'll call it whole stack slides, okay? And then maybe a scenario number two would be I push on block A and block C doesn't move and block B kind of squirts upward there, right? Yeah? So let's say for scenario two, block B moves upwards, okay? And what we got to do is we got to find out what is that force P that makes that block move. Okay, so here's force P. So we're going to have a P for scenario one and a P for scenario two. And what are we going to do? We're going to choose the smallest of those two because the smallest one is the one that's going to happen first, right? And so we've got to solve both scenarios and find a value here so that we can make a decision on um, how big P is to make block B move, okay? Now we're given the um, coefficient of static friction for between the block and the floor, and then between the blocks each other, right? So let's just go ahead and attack scenario number one, okay? Now scenario number one, I'm gonna consider those three blocks as one big block, okay? Let me draw that. Okay, there it is. That's super close. I know, right? Okay. <coughs> Choke myself up. Okay. Can you finish this free body diagram? Push pause and finish it. Ready to go. All right, are you back? Here we go. Let's see. Uh, the total weight, 300, 600 is 900, 1,020. So I'm going to do this. 1,020 newtons. Uh, I think we're the, you know, Block push on floor, floor push on block, right? Uh, that's called a normal force, perpendicular to the plane. And then the whole block wants to slide up the hill, but friction says, no, I oppose you. And he's trying to make you slide down the hill, okay? All right, now you remember our equation here for friction. Friction, friction is fun, okay? Well, okay, there you go. There's the equation. What is that? What is this? This is max friction, okay? This is like impending motion. What is impending motion? Here in Texas, we call that fixing the slide, right? The, for that equation to be valid, to be used, right, for friction, uh, that block is fixing the slide, right? It's on the verge of slipping, okay? And in this case, yeah, that's what we're trying to solve for, isn't it? So I'm going to replace that with mu times n, and mu is what? 0.4. So how about 0.4 n, okay? Now, the only other thing that I need to do here 
is I need, this is, this is probably one of the most common mistakes I see people making on these, is this, right? What is that angle right there, okay? What is that angle? Because look, here, here's, if I draw this straight down, right? I'm asking, what is, ugh, that was good, wasn't it? What is that angle there, okay? What is that angle? Well, here we go. Let me draw 90 degrees here, okay? We're given that that's 30. If that's 30, then this is 30. If that's 30, then that's 30. If this is 30, right, if this is 30, then this is 60. If that's 60, then that's 30, okay? And just kind of, you see what I did there? I just kind of worked my way around, right? Here's an angle with a line between two parallel lines, which means that that's 30, right? If that's 30, then that's 30, right? Two parallel lines, line between them. If that's 30, this is 90 degrees, and that's 60, right? Work your way around. I see a lot of people assuming that angle and assuming it wrong. So that'd be a dumb way to give me some points, wouldn't it? Okay, so 30 degrees, okay? So while I got that 30 degrees, let's go ahead and just break that 1020 into components because what we're doing is this is going to be my new X direction and this is going to be my new Y direction. I am tilting my axes, right? So here we go. This guy is, uh, what is that guy? That guy is 1020 times the sine of 30, right? And then this guy right here whoop, is 1020 cos 30, okay? There it is. All right, let's go. Now, tip of the pros here, only for the pros, you amateurs kind of tune out right quick. Notice this, there were no dimensions of these blocks, right? So what does that mean? That in any of this solving that we're gonna be doing on this problem, there's no moment, because for a moment I need distance, don't I? And I don't know, I don't know any of the distances, right? Which tells me that I should be able to solve this with nothing more than forces X and forces Y. No moment equations, okay? So here we go, some of the forces in the X, and then some of the forces in the Y. All right, let's see what we got. In the X, I've got P, right, going positive. I got this guy opposing me, minus 0.4 in, and then I've got that guy going in the negative direction, so minus 1020 uh, sine of 30. And then in the y direction, what do I have? I have n, and I have mm, that guy. That's it, right? Minus 10, 20, cosine of 30, okay? Oh, this is a job for our handy-dandy TI-36 Pro. Here we go, on, clear, all right? 10, 20, mm, 10, 20. Times the cosine of 30, cosine 30, is 83.3. Okay, so N equals 883.3. Okay, Newtons. I should be able to take that now, whoop, plug it in right there and get P, right? So P is equal to, all right, here we go, 0. 0.4 times N, so times 0.4 equals, and then the sine of 30 is the same as the cosine of 60, that's a half. That's 510, isn't it? So plus 510, and there's my answer. 863.3 newtons, okay? I'm gonna put that up here. 863.3 newtons, okay? So there's one possible uh, p-value there, right? Is that the right one? Is it gonna do that? I don't know. I better check that one and make sure it doesn't do that one instead of that one, okay? So I'm gonna erase this, give us some room, and then we'll do option number two. Okay, here we go, option number two. Now what I've done is the way to solve this next, next step is to break these apart and, and analyze each one of these components individually, okay? So instead of having one big free body, like the whole thing slides together, now we have all these little independent free bodies, okay? Now I'm telling you, gang, 
The secret to these problems is drawing perfect free body diagrams. If you can't do this, we're in trouble. What it means is you got to go practice somewhere else and practice and practice and practice. And I've got lots of videos on the channel on this, okay? If you do nothing more than draw free bodies until you get them right every single time, then that's going to be worth your time. So here we go. I want you to push pause and draw the arrows on these free, three free bodies. And if you get them right, we're golden, right? But if you don't, you better go practice, all right? So here we go. Push pause and draw the arrows. Ready? Go. All right, are you back? Did you push pause? Dad gum it up. Push pause. Okay. Here we go. Let's see if you get the same thing that I do. Here we go. Okay. Uh, obviously, I'm going to do the easy ones first. Okay. There's a, a force right here, a P. And then notice this. I tilted the blocks, right? But what I can't do is I can't tilt the weight. Okay. And we decided that the weight was tilted over 30 degrees. So I'm going to draw it like this. Okay. There it is. 30 degrees. Okay. Uh-uh. And here we go again, uh-uh, 30 degrees. And then one more time over here, uh-uh, 30 degrees, okay? And let's see, this one was 300, and this one was 120, and this one was 600, okay? The next thing I like to do is I like to draw all the normal force, forces first. Now, I don't care what, I may label my normal forces different than you did, and I don't care, as long as they're all called something different. Because if you label them all in, then you're thinking, oh, they're all the same. No, they are not the same, okay? They're all different. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this. Block push on floor, floor push on block. I'm gonna call that normal F for floor, okay? On this surface, right? Remember, anytime two bodies are in contact, it's perfectly normal, okay? So here we go. Over here, I've got an M, I'm going to call it C. Well, over here, i got one in C. Why are those two different directions? Because Newton's third law, every action causes a reaction, right? And then over here, right, I'll call that guy in B. And I'll call this guy in B. And then over here, boom, I'll call this guy in A. All right. Did anybody put a normal force there? Oh, uh -huh. did you? Why didn't you put one there? Did I mess up? Hold on, look at this. Remember, normal force, think bathroom scale force, right? If I could put a scale under there, what would it read, okay? As I start to push on that, the instant before this block begins to move, which is Spanish for lift off the floor, right? What would a bathroom scale read right there? Zero. Okay, so... There's no normal force here the instant it starts to move. Consequently, there's no friction there either, is there? Okay? So that's why there's not a normal force there. Now I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna put my friction forces on here, okay? And so the friction forces, the easy ones are where the blocks are touching the world, right? Because I know that block C wants to slide that way, so friction wants to push against me this way, right? I know that, okay? And block A, it wants to slide that way, so friction wants to slide this way, right? Those two are kind of easy to understand. But these block-to-block -block frictions are the ones where most people get lost, okay? Now, I know that I'm going to have an FC there, an FC there, an FB there, and an FB there. But I just don't know which way the arrows go, okay? So here's what I always tell my students. You are the free body, okay? This is you. What do you feel? Well, I feel this block <laughs> sliding that way against me, don't I? What is that thing that I feel? That thing that I feel is friction, okay? And so here's what I feel. Bam. Now, this one's easy. If you're this free body, what do you feel? I feel this block relative to me sliding downhill, right? So I feel that. Now, once you find, you figure out one of the directions, then you automatically have the other one because it has to be in the opposite direction, right? Same thing. I'm here. What do I feel? I feel that block <laughs> sliding against me that way. So, bam, there it is. So, what's this one going to be? That. And that's it. You're perfectly drawn free body diagram. Did you get it right? 100%? All right.
here we go. Now, the next thing that I would do is I think I would just break, you know, angled forces into components. Let's just do that right quick. That'll make it easy on us, okay? Now, this is a 45 degree angle, okay? This is, this is 45 here, so don't mess that up, okay? 45, which means I have like this guy, and then I have that guy, and I have that guy, and this guy, and I have one there, and one there, and then this one, same thing, one here, and one there, right? So this is going to be 300 cos 30. This one's 300 sine 30. Um, this one is 120 cos 30. This one's 120 sine 30. Okay, and then this, this is 45, and this is 45. Now, 45 degrees, sine and cosine of 45 is 0.707, isn't it? Okay, so we can do this. Let's do this. This one is 0.707 NC. This one's 0.707 NC. This one's 0.707 FC. And this one's 0.707 FC. Okay, that makes that kind of easy. Okay. Now, one thing here, okay? What about this guy over here? Okay? Is that guy fun friction? And the answer is no. Okay? What is fun friction? Impending motion. Is that block sliding? No. Is there friction there? Mm, yeah, because the friction is keeping it from sliding, right? How big is the friction? I don't know. It's somewhere between zero and and max, right? It's somewhere between zero and fun friction. So it's just another unknown. It's another variable. I'd have to go solve for it. I don't know, right? Now, all the other frictions of this problem, right? Sliding, 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 sliding. If everything else is moving, then everything else is fun friction, right? I can substitute mu times n everywhere I have a friction force, everywhere except that guy. Okay? Can I do that right quick? Is that okay? I'm going to do that, okay? So this FB, block to block, block to block is what? 0.2, okay? So this guy is 0.2 NB, right? Mu times N. This guy, 0.2 NB. This guy up here, 0.2 NC. Um, I'm just going to make these two guys the same thing, right? Uh, 0.2 NC, and make that guy, 0.2 NC, and then this guy over here, also 0.2 NC, and then this guy down here is block to floor, which is 0.4, so I'll call this guy 0.4 NA, okay, are you still with me, is it too much? Man, push pause and rewind back and make sure that you're following me here, okay? Because the next thing, you know, I, we've got it so well labeled here. Piece of cake, man. So we have to start, since we only have four six four so Y, we have to start with a free body that only has two unknowns in it. This free body here has NB, NB, NC, NC. That's it. Let's start there. Could we start over there? This one has NF, FF, and NC. Three unknowns, no. Over here, what do I got? NA, NB, and P. Three unknowns, no way, all right? So that's, our, that's the money right there, okay? So some of the force in the X and some of the force in the Y, okay? And this may be a job for system solver, man. Let's see what we can do here, okay? So NB... That's in the X. Who else is in the X? That guy. Minus 120 sine of 30. Um, minus 0 0.707 in C. And then this guy minus. Oh, NF. What are you doing over there? NF. Um, minus 0 0.707 times 0 0.2 in C. Is that in the X direction? 1, 2. Three, 
four. One, two, three, four. Yeah, we got them all. Okay, and in the y direction, what do we have? We have this guy going uphill, 0 0.707 in C, okay? And then I got that guy going downhill, minus 0 0.707 times 0 0.2 in C. And then that guy going downhill, minus 120, cos 30, cos 30, okay? And then this guy, right, minus 0 0.2 in B. So in the y direction, I have one, two, three, four. One, two, three, I'm good. All right, here we go. Now I'm gonna rewrite, this is, this is my equation one, this is my equation two, I'm gonna rewrite this, okay? Watch this little trick. In B, okay, I'm just rewriting this first equation. Now those two go together, don't they? 0 0.707. And 0 0.707 times 0 0.2 is 0 0.1414, right? So that becomes negative 0 0.8484 in C. And then the sine of 30 is a half times that, and I'm going to move that to the other side, whoop, is equal to 60, okay? All that is is equation one rewritten. That's it, okay? So we'll call that a one. Number two, now I'm writing this in the same way. In B's, in C's, constants, right? So in B's, what do I got? Minus 0.2 in B. And then what do I got? In C, I got this one, and this is a 0.1414. Let's see. Point on clear. Point... 707 minus 0.1414, that's 0.5656. But that's going to be a positive, so plus 0.5656 NC is equal to, let's move that, whoop, to the other side, right? So 120 times the cosine of 30 is 103.92. Okay, so there's two equations, right? You know what? How easy is this if you know how to use your system solver? Okay, so I go to second, uh, system solver, two by two, and then this has a one in front of it, doesn't it? One, right? So one, enter, negative 0.8484, enter, 60, enter, um, negative 0.2, enter, plus 0.5656, enter, and then 103.92, yes, and then solve. Bam. What does that give me? Okay, that gives me this. My calculator says that NB is equal to 308.4, and NC is equal to 292.8. Okay. Beautiful. Now, what do I need? I need P. So I need some information on this free body. Well, you know what? NB, I got NB, don't I? So NB is 308.4. 308.4. And up here, 0.2 times 308.4. Oh, we are home free, baby. Here we go. All right, equation one. Some of the forces in the X. What do I got? I got P, I got minus 0.4 in A, and then I got minus 308.4. Anybody else? Oh yeah, that guy. Minus 300 sine 30, okay? And in the Y direction, what do I have there? In the Y, I got NA, I got that guy, plus 0.2 times 308.4. And then I got that guy, which is minus 300 cos 30. Okay, so let's move the 300 cos 30 to the other side. N A is equal to 300, room clear, 300 cos 30 
which is 259.8, right? And then subtract that from it, minus 0.2 times 308.4 equals, bam, 198.1. Okay, so there's NA. Now I can take that value and plug it in, bam, right there, and I can get P, can I? Okay, so P is equal to, here we go, times 0.4, bam, 79.25, move that to the other side, he's positive, right? And then, oh, that one's gonna be positive, and that one's gonna be positive, isn't it? Plus, 308.4 plus 300 times the sine of 30. Drum roll, please. P equals 537.6 newtons. Okay, so there it is. 500, what do we say? 37.6 newtons. Man, we got it. Woo! That's a lot, isn't it? So what happened? How is block B going to move? Well, it's going to move when P equals 537.6, and this block is going to squirt uphill. This block is never, ever going to move, is it? Okay? You might have thought that that was the answer, and that's good enough, and just give up and go to the next problem. Nope. That's the answer. Okay? So you've got to solve for both scenarios, right? And the key, guys, the key is beautiful, perfect free body diagrams. Man, I hope that helps, and I'll see you on the next video.